Have you ever encountered a hurdle with launching or growing your business? Listen, there are two things that run a business, the back end and your soft skills. I'm telling you right now, if these aren't in place, you'll lose clients and you'll lose money. You don't want that? Well, you're in the right place. Hey, I'm Dana. Hey, I'm Sarah. We're your hosts of the Entrepreneur Encounter, and we're going to give you a behind the scenes glance into our businesses, give you genuine feedback, tips and tricks, plus occasionally bring on guests that care about supporting you to grow your business organically and nurturing authentic relationships. Are you ready? Hey listeners, Sarah here. I'm on a mission to humanize the workplace for your growing business. The way that your business runs internally affects the business as a whole, such as team retention and satisfaction of your customers. There's a really big number that is kind of scary. 30,000 people plus a year of people that leave the workforce because of the way that the businesses run internally. So I want to change that. I want to ensure that your business is set up for success. So what does this look like? We'll evaluate your business and team satisfaction as a whole. We'll dive deep into the systems and the programs that you have set up for professional development for your team. And then after that, you can get ongoing support for your business and your team. And this looks like the admin side, project management, soft skills training, workplace coaching to set your team up for success so that there's not a high turnover. And again, the goal here is to elevate the success of your business. The easiest way that you can contact me is to send me a DM on Facebook or send me an email at sarah at urrembertllc.com. Welcome back to another episode of Entrepreneur Encounter, where we bring you insights and inspiration. We're your hosts, Dana and Sarah. First off, we want to thank everyone that has been on this journey with us. It's not easy, but when you have people in your corner, it genuinely makes all the difference. It's officially a new month, and that means new topics. This month, we'll be diving into criticism. When you think of that word, you may wonder like, oh no, something's wrong. You did something. You forgot something. But that's not necessarily the case. Whether you're just starting or have been in the game for a while, handling criticism is a skill that can make or break your entire entrepreneur journey. So what is criticism? It's feedback or judgment about something in your work, about your ideas or performance. It can come from various sources like your clients, those that you work with, or even your competitors. Criticism can actually help you see blind spots in your workflows, help improve customer service, It can be a source of valuable insights. It can also challenge your assumptions and ideas and help you think outside the box. So with all of these great points, we wanted to welcome our first guest of the month, Samantha. Samantha, will you take a few moments and let us know who you are and what you do and all the fun stuff? Yeah, so I own Boise Music Therapy Company and I am the host of the Every Brain is Different podcast. And we really focus on supporting individuals who are neurodivergent. And so that means like people with autism, ADHD, dyslexia. Those definitely aren't all the diagnoses, but those are some examples. And we do that through music therapy, behavioral therapy, and providing parent coaching to parents who have neurodivergent kids. That's awesome. That's really cool that you do that. Oh, thank you. (laughs) So with the work that you do, even with your clients or if your clients are faced with criticism, how can you help your clients navigate through the difference between constructive criticism and unhelpful negativity? So we work a lot on social emotional goals. So we might learn what each emotion means, what it feels like in your body, how it might look in a different person. And I think that criticism is so important to understand because people with ADHD have rejection sensitivity dysphoria where you take on the criticism and you're like, oh, this person doesn't like me. I'm such a bad person. It's just to the extreme. And so really understanding the difference We're just telling you like constructive criticism. And so we might do that through music. We might write songs about it, do lyric analysis about it, 
just different things like that to understand the difference between this is constructive criticism and this is maybe not so constructive (laughs) criticism. And then what you can do after you like go between the two, then we might do like improvisation where you can understand what it feels like, what it sounds like, and then you can go and understand what that feels like in your body and then how to react to it. Because a lot of people who are are neurodivergent, they don't understand how the emotion might feel in their body or how you can name it. And so understanding that can help you go forward. That is great. I can relate to that because even as a kid or as an adult, you hear somebody say, like, give you the criticism. And I know that typically when you give criticism, it's supposed to be helpful to make sure that everybody is doing the best that they can. Those are really great insights. So what are your thoughts on the source of the criticism? Because obviously anybody can give constructive criticism, but those that have, you know, ADHD or no matter what the type of person that you are, how do you figure out like who you should listen to? Because somebody can say something from off the street and you don't know them. Obviously, that wouldn't be a good source. But we want to make sure that everybody has the correct people in their corner, so to speak, to give that constructive criticism. Yeah. So I'd work with the person to make a list of the people that are important to them, the opinions that they care about from those people, depending on their age. I work a lot with kids. So if they're younger kids, we would make a song and say, these are the people that I want to listen to. These are the people that I want to listen to. That's awesome, though. And just go through and let them decide who they think is an important person to listen to. And then maybe if they say like, oh, my parents aren't important to listen to, we might talk about that and be like, well, maybe let's reconsider that. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I'm not going to lie. I really like that. I feel like as entrepreneurs, I know we're adults, but I feel like with all of the noise that's on social media and the free masterclasses and this and that, like we really should. Who is it that I want to listen to for our inspiration? Like where are we trying to get to in our businesses and then align ourselves with those two to three people only, and then kind of block out the rest of that noise to help you stay focused. Yeah, I think that is so important because I know like I have ADHD. And so I feel like I need to do all the things and listen to all the people. And if I listen to all the people, then they will help me get to where I need to be. And I will do all the things. But it's important to narrow down who you're going to listen to because you can't do all the things. It's impossible. And then you do nothing because you're focusing on everything. Yeah, that is very true. I've been there and done that. (laughs) I feel like that this morning. (laughs) (laughs) How can we effectively respond to constructive criticism? Now, I know that you said like with the clients that you work with, you encourage them to write a song. Is there any other things that we can do to respond to that? Yeah, I think just making a plan in advance of how you're going to respond. So if someone does something or says something to you that's not true, like you need to learn what's true and what's not true. A lot of people who are neurodivergent, they can't tell the difference between a true statement and something that is just someone's opinion. And so if someone gives their opinion to you, you can decide if that's true or not true. And then you can go in and say, okay, if it's true, I'm going to respond this way. If it's not true and it's just their opinion of me, then I will take that in consideration or not take it into consideration. Like you get to decide and then how you're going to respond, like just make a plan. Yeah, that's a good thing too. What about with those that have like ADHD, how does it affect their listening ability? Like if somebody's giving them constructive feedback, like, hey, this is how we can improve. This is what we can do to make this plan better. But personally, sometimes as somebody that has ADHD, sometimes it can be hard to listen attentively because you're all over the place and you're thinking about different things. So what advice could you give to those to help them listen rather than take it as a negative way. Yeah, I would say find something that helps you focus, whether that's something to fidget with, whether that's taking medication, like telling the person I'm listening to you, but I'm not making eye contact with you because 
when people who are neurodivergent make eye contact, a lot of the time they're not listening because they're looking at your micro expressions. They're looking at your face too much and just trying to interpret what you're saying by your facial expression. And so I would just tell people who are speaking to people who are neurodivergent, if they're like fidgeting with something or they're doing something else, don't think that they're not listening because that could be how they're actually focusing. Then focus on what that person is saying once you find the way to focus. Like, for example, if I were talking to you and I'm just like, okay, they're not listening. So what advice would you give to me to understand the fact that they are listening, but they just have a different way of listening, so to speak? Yeah, I would just make it very clear, like, is this how you focus? Like I would ask them in advance, like how do you focus when you're listening to a conversation? Do you actually make eye contact? Do you look away? Do you fidget with something? Do you like work on something else? Like what is your way of focusing? So I understand what you're doing because it does look a lot like people aren't listening when they're trying to actually focus. They're trying really hard to focus. And then if you're the person giving constructive criticism, I would say that. I would say, I'm not mad at you. You're not in trouble. These are just some things that I would like to help you work on. Let's make a plan together. So then it's not like you're attacking that person. That person can't be like, oh, they don't like me because they have some things that they want me to work on. I would just make it very clear what you're talking about. That's a really good point. So to the next point as well, like don't take it personally. We're trying to help you, so to speak. But again, like I liked when you say ask the person how they focus, because that would give you a better understanding on how you speak to this person. Because we talk a lot about communication and everybody's brain works differently. Some people don't like the eye contact. And I've noticed that when I talk to people, I have had to tell myself, like, look, this person may think differently than you. So don't try to get upset about like, hey, they're not making eye contact. Because obviously, I think eye contact is great. But sometimes people get really uncomfortable with that. So usually what they look right here, like, so instead of doing the eye in the eyes, they look at the forehead, right? Is it the forehead? Or was it the nose? You read my mind. So I was going to offer that. So yes, I learned this in public speaking class way back when. You either look at their nose or you look at like if they had a dot on their forehead. So it's in the same general area, but it's not as intimidating because I get red faced and I fluster all the things when I have to make like severe eye contact. (laughs) Yeah, eye contact is so uncomfortable for me because I'm always like, okay, you have to make eye contact, but you can't make too much eye contact. And if you make too much eye contact, then it gets weird. But what's the point of when it gets weird? And so I don't know, like eye contact for me is so hard. Like I do make it because it seems to make other people feel more comfortable. But if I'm making eye contact with you, I'm probably not listening to what you're saying as well as if I would just like look away. I feel like I get too nervous and I forget how to respond. So I hear you, but I don't know what to say back. That's why I do rely heavily on someone's forehead. (laughs) That is a good thing to do because like, When I'm listening, I'm like you. So I'm listening, but I'm thinking about the eye contact. And I'm thinking about if I'm making it too long, when should I look away? Sometimes I even count like, okay, I'm going to make eye contact for 10 seconds. And then I'm going to look away for a second. So I'm thinking about that. And then I'm like, oh, how should I respond? And so then I start thinking about how I'm going to respond to something they said. And then they're like on a completely different thing that they're saying. And I'm like, this is not working for me. (laughs) Attention service-based entrepreneurs, unleash the power of Pinterest with a professionally optimized business account. In case you're new here, my name is Dana, co-host of Entrepreneur Encounter, and I want to be your Pinterest setup specialist. Together, we will tailor your Pinterest presence to your brand and audience, optimize your profile with captivating visuals and descriptions, develop a strategic pinning plan to reach your target audience, And then integrate Pinterest with your other marketing channels so you can repurpose instead of working harder. Then if you love your Pinterest account setup, I do have ongoing support packages for continued success. So if you've been wanting to unlock Pinterest potential for your wedding planning business, contact me at my website, ddvirtualmanagement.com and we can get started. 
So listeners, you do not need to make eye contact 100%. Because I know for a fact that when I'm talking to somebody, I do look off, but it doesn't need to happen. Yeah. Just ensure the person that you're talking to that you're paying attention. You know, if you're not making eye contact, like you were saying, like, how do you focus? If you're fidgeting with something, just know that that's how the person works. (laughs) Yeah. If you're a person that doesn't like making eye contact or you need to fidget, I would just tell that person, say, I am listening to you. I listen better when I do this. And I really want to understand what you're saying to me. And I think that they'll understand. And if they don't, then forget them. So (laughs) (laughs) yeah, no, for sure. Like when I was talking about don't take it personally, like how would you tell somebody don't take it personally? Because oftentimes when we hear criticism, especially when it's constructive criticism, when that person is trying to help you, sometimes it does feel like an, like you're attacking me, like you're saying these bad things, but obviously we're trying to help you improve. So how can we manage our emotional response to criticism? I would do that through music and just practicing. So There's this thing called drum talk where you can like have a conversation with someone through drumming and you could do it with yourself. And so like you start out with maybe you're feeling very emotional and you just like drum on a drum. And you can do this with somebody else if you're having like high tensions or whatever. And you can go back and forth and just have like a conversation, you know, in quotes, back and forth. But I would get out my emotional response and process it through music. But that's how I would do it. You know, you could play the piano, you can improvise, you can listen to music, and that can just help your brain process what's going on. But I would make a plan in advance for, okay, when someone gives me criticism, I'm going to do this and have like a mantra or something, or you can have a song that you listen to, or you can make up a song that you sing or just something to remind yourself that it's not personal. They're trying to help you and to get through that. I love it. Like I love the music aspect of it because I'm a music junkie. I actually have a set of drums. I just haven't played them in a while, but I mean, it's good to uh, find what works for you, even if it's not music. When we talk about like self-care, like what helps you get through the emotional times? Some people go outside, some people play music or read a book or whatever. So I believe that with the emotional response and taking that time to just kind of process it all, especially if you're in a vulnerable position and you're like, oh my goodness, like they're giving me all this criticism. I'm not doing good. Well, yeah, you're doing good, but what can we do to make it better? So Sometimes people do get emotional. I know sometimes I do. I'm not going to lie. But it's great to be able to figure out like what works for you in terms of like what's going to help you regulate those emotions. Yeah. I would also have something ready if you know in advance, like let's say you're going to like a performance evaluation or something at work Mm -hmm. or you get feedback from a client about your services Have a list of things ready that you are fantastic at and you can remind yourself, hey, I'm really good at these things. And then go and process however you process, like you said, whether that's through music or reading or writing or walking, whatever, you can go and process all those emotions. But you can also remind yourself like, hey, I'm okay. This is what I'm good at. This is what I can work on. And that's okay because everyone has things that they can work on. Yeah. Most definitely. I think that's the mantra right there. (laughs) (laughs) I would think embrace the criticism like as a tool, a powerful tool for growth mindset to be able to use that as a stepping stone to success. Yeah. And be grateful, like have a grateful heart for the criticism so that you can understand like, hey, this is what other people who are close to me, who I care about, this is what they think. And maybe I should take that in consideration and thank them for bringing it to your attention. I think that makes it an even more powerful tool for personal and professional growth if we thank them for their feedback, especially if they took the time to do it in a way that wasn't shameful and it was just like open feedback because you don't know what you don't know and you can't change what you don't recognize. Yeah, exactly. I love that. (laughs) So we know that criticism sounds like a bad word, but it's not. It just matters who it's coming from. 
like you were saying, make a list of those people that care about you. Like, who do you want to hear that from? And this will help you determine about if they actually care about you or they're just saying something to be judgmental because obviously there's people out there that are just going to say something just to say something. So don't take that to heart. Samantha, do you have any final thoughts, any advice you would like to give to our entrepreneur listeners about criticism and all the stuff that we talked about? Yeah, I would just say find what works for you, whether that's music, whether that's reading, writing, whatever. Find a way to process what you're feeling after criticism and be prepared for criticism. So prepare yourself before, rather that's like writing a song about what you're going to do after the criticism or making a plan. Just make a plan for, okay, every time I get criticism, this is what I'm going to do. And then I would start with making a list of whose opinion really matters to you and say, okay, when this person who really matters to me gives me constructive criticism, this is what I'm going to do when I'm feeling that rejection sensitivity dysphoria. Or if you don't have ADHD, I mean, people still have a strong response to criticism. So you can just say, when I'm feeling rejected, when I'm feeling like maybe I'm not doing the best that I can when I thought I was doing really well, this is what I'm going to do. And then after you decide what you're going to do, make a plan for how you're going to do self-care after you get the criticism and make a plan going forward of how you're going to take that criticism into your life. But I would just be prepared, like make a plan now. I went to this thing about how you need to have long-term insurance for when you're old and need care. And so I would say get that, treat it like insurance now that you're getting insurance for when you're feeling down so it can't take over your life, you know, like prepare now. So in the future, when you get it, you have a plan and you're ready. Yeah. Plans are good. Plans are good to put in place. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Dana, do you have any other questions? I don't think so. These were really good thoughts on criticism. And I'm really going to for real take the song, Who Do I Want to Listen To? Like to heart, especially as we're going into a new month. That's going to be my best quarterly advice is who do I want to listen to? And then tune out everyone else. Yeah, I got some drums. I can start making a beat and then I can send a beat to you. So I can start to make a part one song. I love it. That would make me so happy. And I just want to put out there, like if anyone wants help with this, if they want help managing emotions or managing criticism in a musical way, definitely contact me and I can help you with that. That is a good question. So how can we connect with you? Yeah, so I have my website, boisemusictherapycompany.com. Remember the company part. I don't know why I put it in there, but it's Boise Music Therapy Company. Everyone forgets that. And then on Instagram, I'm on mainly on Instagram and TikTok, but it's at Boise Music Therapy or Every Brain is Different. Perfect. Yeah, we will have all that information in the show notes so that we can find all that information. Well, Samantha, we are thankful that you came on the show today and I appreciate all your insight on criticism. As always, all the information is in the show notes. Until next time. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you. Thanks for tuning in to another episode. Remember, soft skills aren't just some fluffy buzzwords that get thrown around in the corporate world. They're the key to unlocking your full potential as a professional and a human being. Don't be afraid to invest in yourself and seek out opportunities to improve your soft skills. Sarah and I have a variety of workshops, online courses, and complimentary clarity calls for you to practice in real time with us. Links are always in the show notes. And be sure to join us next time for more insights, tips, and tricks to help you succeed in your entrepreneur encounter.